The American Society for Engineering Education advances innovation, excellence and access at all levels of education for the engineering profession. This is the 2021 ASEE's annual conference and you are watching ASEE TV. Welcome back to the second day of the ASEE's annual meeting and the second episode of ASEE TV. ASEE's Nathan Carl joins us once again to bring us his meeting highlights and interviews plenary speaker Gary Bertolini on leading the new task force on the current state of engineering and engineering technology education. She thought that we should do something to really look at the state of engineering education. We're also very pleased to welcome ASE Executive Director Norman Fontenbury to highlight some of the exciting programs and initiatives the ASE has been working on. Looking at expanding and retain, better retaining our domestic membership. The ASE is also leading development of a national faculty teaching excellence framework. And Don Visco of the University of Akron introduces us to this very valuable credential is to provide a mechanism for community-developed standards of excellence. But first, let's head back to Nathan for his session highlights from day two of the ASE's 2021 virtual meeting. Hello everyone and welcome to day two of ASE's 128th annual conference. Today is Tuesday, July 27th, and we have some great content for you. ASEE's annual conference always delivers inspiring and insightful talks from leaders in our field. I'm very happy to highlight two people who are joining us this year. First, Gary Bertolini is our featured speaker at one of today's plenaries. Gary is the Dean of the Polytechnic Institute and a distinguished professor of computer graphics technology and computer information technology at Purdue University. Daryl Pines, president of the University of Maryland, will also share his insights. Many in the ASE community, myself included, got to know Daryl during the 11 years he served as Dean of the A. James Clark School of Engineering at Maryland. Daryl is one of many engineering deans to recently make the leap to president or provost. A fun side note that I don't think he'll mind me sharing, Daryl's son Donovan was recently named to the U.S. National Men's Soccer Team, so congratulations to Donovan. Safe to say it's been a good year for the Pines family. We hope you enjoyed today's sessions. And now, Stephen, over to you. Thanks again, Nate. We're now joined by ASC Executive Director Norman Fortenbury. Norman, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to be here, Stephen. Norman, can you give us a little bit of a flavor of some of the projects the ASCE has been working on this year? It has been a busy year. We have ongoing right now, and there'll be a report at the plenary of our curriculum task force. We also have a teaching excellence task force. We also have a task force of our campus reps to improve uh, the quality and responsiveness of our uh, campus reps. Our journals task force, looking at our scholarly publications and how those can be made uh, even more uh, rigorous and responsive to the community. We have a new task force on diversifying ASE's leadership. What has the society been doing to engage its members over the last year and a half? ASE is engaged as an active participant in the Engineering Research Visioning Alliance, or IRVA, which is a National Science Foundation effort to define the future frontiers of engineering technical research. We have online webinars via the ASEE Resource Central. We've also had the virtual conferences that you've talked about, and we've unveiled the ASEE Hub as a virtual community. Quite a bit going on. As we set our sights on 2022, what are some of the initiatives you're most excited by? Well, we're going to continue our efforts uh, to uh, continue the work within the various task forces. We are looking at expanding and retain, better retaining our domestic membership. And we're looking at expanding our individual and institutional membership uh, in order to share and learn with others from around the world. Norman, it sounds like it's been a busy year for the ASCE despite all this uh, virtual activity. And thank you again so much for joining us. Happy to be here, Stephen. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. We hope you're taking time to participate in our social media contest. Every year, ASCE's associate editor, Jen Pocock, comes up with some clever, crafty, creative questions and posts them to our Twitter account with the conference hashtag ASCE Annual. Engineering or conference location related, these questions will test your knowledge and no Google cheating. 
I know this year, since we were supposed to be in Long Beach, she has some SoCal-related questions for you. Correct answers are randomly chosen daily, with the winner getting a Visa gift card. So go see what Jen has cooked up for today. Today we feature a two-part series on Cadence, a leader in electronic design with 30 years of computational software expertise. In this first part, we look at how Cadence Academic Network delivers intelligent system design technology training and programs to the global academic community, lowering barriers for academia to support and access leading edge technology for classroom teaching and fundamental research. The Cadence Academic Network is a branch of Cadence that helps connect students and professors with our R&D and our technology. Our team is what enables academia to keep pushing forward. We really kind of enable them doing that next generation of thinking, figuring out the innovative new solutions and then bringing that uh, into the world. We streamline access to our technology for undergraduates, for researchers, pro for professors. Whether it is helping a professor incorporate Cadence technology into their curriculum, fostering research collaborations, or cultivating the next generation of innovators by providing easy access to leading edge technology for classwork or student clubs, my team and I are involved. Our goal is to help enable the next generation of innovators to be able to work well with our technology and to be able to have experience with this technology as they move out into the real world to get jobs. And we also have a great desire to connect with professors as they have some amazing ideas and they can be good thought partners for our R&D and for some of the programs that we work on. In the studio now, we're joined by Gary Bertolini of Purdue University, who's going to talk about a task force he's heading out for ASEE. Hi there, Gary. Hi, good morning. In June of 2020, ASEE President Cheryl Sorby challenged members to review the current state of engineering and engineering technology education in preparing engineers. From that challenge came the task force you're heading up. Can you provide a little background into the task force you've been asked to lead? Sure. The uh, task force started, um, as you said, about a year ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, Cheryl Sorby and I have known each other for a number of years, and she actually approached me uh, more than a year ago when uh, she thought that we should do something to really look at the state of engineering education through the eyes of engineering educators, which is the ASWE organization. And so when she found out that she was elected as the next president of ASWE, we had a, a, a long conversation about you know, what we really would like to do. And she asked me to lead this task force. And so um, shortly after she was, uh, you know, sworn in as, as the president of uh, ASWE, she made a presentation at the conference and she really challenged uh, the organization to take a hard look at engineering education and what we could do to really um, do something transformational. There's been a lot of efforts over the years, a lot of reports over the years, and we've incrementally made changes. They've been good overall, but um, we really thought it was time to take a good, hard, long, deep look at the state of engineering education. Can you share a few details of the work of the steering committee? The steering committee has really helped us to um, find some direction on how we go about doing this. To say that we're going to do something transformational is easy. To actually do it is much different, right? And so the um, steering committee helped uh, formulate how we're going to actually do this. And so we've created a, a scope document that we call it. It's the mindset of a future engineer. Um, and the scope document actually um, outlines the areas that we really want to focus in on in order to improve uh, the engineering education. It also includes engineering technology education, um, and that's uh, something different than what we've done in the past. So we're trying to be as inclusive as possible in how we look at engineering education. And so this scope document is about 95% done right now. Uh, and that scope document will be used by the task force 
um, for actually making the recommendations for the changes that we believe are necessary to transform engineering education. Well, Gary, thank you very much for your time today. I know we're all excited about your plenary talk, and I look forward to seeing you next year in person in Minneapolis. Thank you very much. Let's come back now for part two of the series on Cadence Academic Network. For seven years in a row, Fortune magazine has named Cadence one of the 100 best companies to work for. Employees join because of the innovative environment Cadence offers and stay for the culture. They're always looking for diverse leaders who are willing to push the limits of what's possible. If you care about computer science and algorithms and, and, and complex problems, Cadence is just a wondrous place to be. We also focus on innovation, solving new problems as it relates to areas like systems design analysis. The things we're doing is actually build the foundation to make everybody's life you know, easier with all the electronic you know, devices. Diversity and inclusion are part of Cadence DNA. Cadence is truly a very global, diverse, inclusive computer engineering company. A lot of the excitement comes around attacking new things, working on new problems, doing things that people haven't done before. If you have a good team and a strong team, then you can accomplish just about anything you set your mind to. Our customers are on the leading edge of new problems, new frontiers, and they're looking to produce and develop products that are transformational in their space. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the new ASEE Delta Future Faculty Institute. This program is a foundational instructor-led online program to prepare current graduate level students and individuals in industry who are considering a career as an engineering faculty member for a successful launch of their career. Throughout the program, future engineering faculty members will learn about preparing for and navigating the faculty application process. By the end of the program, participants will have the tools and knowledge to positively launch their faculty careers. This program takes place in two two-hour-long sessions. Throughout the program, there will be numerous opportunities to interact with the facilitator and other participants, with ample time provided for questions, discussion, and reflection. So how will you benefit? You will receive clarifying information on types of engineering faculty positions. You will learn tools and techniques to help you successfully navigate the faculty application process. And you will engage with a network of professionals for input, guidance, and feedback. Through the inclusion of leading edge knowledge and best practices in professional development for faculty and administrators, the Delta Institutes will improve efficiency and effectiveness for each participant and thus also do so broadly across the universities they serve. The sessions happen on various dates this August. Visit resources.ase.org and search for Delta. Now, ASE TV is so happy to feature the ASE's National Faculty Teaching Excellence Framework. Don Visco of the University of Akron gives us an overview of the framework and the associated credential. ASCE is leading development of a national faculty teaching excellence framework. The goal is to provide a mechanism for community developed standards of excellence in engineering and, en and engineering technology instruction. Because most doctoral students do not receive any significant instruction on teaching, on-the-job training is really the primary means for new faculty to acquire teaching knowledge. So this initiative by ASCE would increase both awareness of and access to professional development resources on effective teaching from a variety of sources, from individual campuses to national programs. By packaging all of these resources in the form of a faculty credentialing program, certified and managed by ASCE, which is a national organization focused on engineering and engineering technology education. The goal then is to collectively raise the stature of pedagogical training for faculty in engineering and engineering technology. As an individual faculty member, the Faculty Teaching Excellence Program would provide a chance to not only improve personal teaching effectiveness, but also provide a connection to a national community focused on the importance of teaching within engineering and engineering technology programs. As an administrator, improved teacher training for faculty would help educate better prepared students, strengthen assessment and evaluation efforts, and enhance formal recognition of faculty teaching excellence. 
it's expected that ASEE's role within the national framework will be less of a provider of content and more the organization that manages the certification structure and standards within the framework. It's expected that much of the professional development training associated with attaining levels within the national framework would be handled by providers, such as campus-based centers for teaching and learning, professional societies, and other external providers. Indeed, the role of campus-based centers for teaching and learning become crucial within a national framework. This is a, a fantastic opportunity to answer the call that has been going on for more than 100 years about better pedagogical training for faculty who teach engineering and engineering technology students. And what better organization than ASEE to manage uh, the oversight of a credentialing program like this through a national framework. So I'm excited to be part of this effort, excited to lead this task force as we move forward with this initiative. Well, just like that, we've come to the end of the second episode of ASE TV. The third episode of ASE TV keeps up the energy with Nathan Cowell, back to bring us news from the ASE leadership and interview with ASE President-elect Adrienne Menerich. We're also looking at Tana Huffman's work in providing guidance for teaching engineering in K-12 education. And don't forget, you can find ASC TV on the ASC TV tab on the meeting platform or dig back into any content you might have missed on the ASC TV playlist. Thanks again for joining us. We're excited to see you for episode three of ASC TV. <laughs>